We question our daily position Seeking answers and definitions Get the queries of your chest With Ahkam SOS Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices Now this is a live show, we do take in all your questions So if you have any questions you'd like to ask, please send them in via the WhatsApp The email address, uh, if you're watching via YouTube or Facebook Live Put your questions in the comment section Or give us a call at 0203-515-0199 And inshallah, myself and the Sheikh will be able to discuss and answer all of your questions. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is the one and only Sheikh Ali Ma'a. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah, bakhir. Excellent, excellent. Sheikhna, for a lot of our brothers and sisters, we don't know the Quran off by heart, especially specific surahs. Now, when we come to pray our salah, is it okay for us to stand in front of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facing the Qibla and when we are in Qiyam reciting Surah Fatiha, uh, Surah Alhamd and after to hold the Quran, to carry a small Quran or a big one and be able to read from the book, from the Holy Quran whether we are praying an audible or inaudible Salah whether we have to say it loud or quiet is this acceptable, is this okay? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين There is no objection to that uh, especially if you want to recite um, a long surah let's say on Friday you want to recite surah al Jumu'ah yes exactly and well most of us they haven't memorized this surah because mm -hmm. of, this, of its length for example and you want to bring uh, the, the Holy Quran, the book, and recite while praying, while standing in Salah, that should be fine, there's no issue with it. Um, or let's say even some converts or those who don't speak Arabic, it's hard for them when they want to start praying and uh, they are not really um, familiar with the words of the Surah Al-Hamd, for example. Mm. So they may need to uh, recite uh, of the uh, of chapter yeah. itself, or, or the, let's say from the Holy Quran, and recite those surah. So yes, you can. You know, but uh, we try, it, inshallah, to memorize as, uh, as much as we can of surah yes. Quran. Uh, if we can, that's of course a credit. Excellent, Sheikhna. Uh, I said at the beginning that it's a live show. We do take in questions, and we have a question from one of our viewers, and that is that in the surah of Al Tawheed, also known as Surah Ikhlas. Do we recite the word before last as Qaf'an or Qaf'awan? So this is the last ayah uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Qul khula wa ahad Allah wa samad Lam yinid wa lam yinad wa lam yinakullahu Is it Qaf'awan ahad or Qaf'awan ahad? Well, it should be recited as Qaf'awan ahad Okay As mentioned in the Holy Quran Because the Holy Quran was revealed uh, uh, As it is with one you know the way and the method of of uh, the way it's been written and the way in which we have to recite it mm -hmm. uh, there are of course in the other school of thoughts qiraatus sab' the seven recitations in which you might say kuf an ahad mm -hmm. or maliki you might say maliki yawm mm. we can't recite these words in the holy quran so we stick with the original recitation of the holy quran okay. as it is now so um, yeah i mean you can't have the Holy Quran uh, uh, with different qiraat uh, and recitation. It has to be one as the Holy Quran is one. Mm -hmm. And that's the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yes. Excellent. Shaykh, now moving from the Quran to istikhara. Now, should istikhara be taken at times of hesitation? Or can we do istikhara in any circumstance? Well, the istikhara as we have a, a saying in which we say al khira and al hira uh, the istikhara is in, in the time of hesitation in the time of indecision so initially you do your own investigations and research let's say it's a marriage proposal so you ask about uh, the other side uh, you know his background 
check history and so forth. You check everything. And then when you're still hesitant and you're still unsure, then you take the istikhara. Istikhara is not there that for every action and for every step to be taken, I take istikhara. You know, tomorrow, if, shall I go to the park? Let's have mm -hmm. istikhara. Or should I go to that restaurant? Let's have istikhara. No. Unless you are in a 50-50 situation, uh, then of course you take the istikhara. Otherwise, the one should do tawakkul on Allah Azza wa Jal and proceed with his own decisions, so on, uh, you know, uh, uh, findings and khalas. You just go and do after you, let's say, pay sadaqa and tawakkul on Allah Azza wa Jal. But as I've said, if there is an uh, indecision, then of course you go back to uh, the istikhara uh, in which you are asking for advice mm -hmm. from the Holy Quran, for example, guidance and so forth. Excellent. Shaila, what is the limit and scope of interaction for a revert to Islam whose family are not Muslim? Um, there may be people of the book or non-believers. What guidance would you offer them? His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah, says Sistani, he actually has some, <laughs> some advice for these people. What is he, what's, what's his advice? Yes, His Eminence mentions that uh, such individuals uh, who become Muslims, uh, they must keep their relationship um, with their parents, with their brothers, sisters who are not Muslim yet or non-Muslims to keep them in a good uh, relationship, you know, respect, buying them gifts, for example, in certain occasions, for example, uh, keep that good connection with them so they might be attracted towards Islam as well and they might be one day uh, reverts and become Muslims. So the one should keep this uh, connection and uh, link with his parents who are not from the same religion. And uh, as I've said, uh, you know, advise them, guide them towards the teachings of the Prophet and the Holy Quran and explain to them the truth about uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the Islam and the Quran and Ahlul Bayt that what they have been hearing and seeing on TV and other media uh, uh, resources is not really true in which Islam is a religion of violence and so forth. So he needs to guide them and teach them the true Islamic values in which the Holy Prophet ﷺ implemented and brought. And of course the Holy Quran also mentioned and was revealed. So he needs to do his best in order to show a good attitude and conduct towards them and also attract them towards Islam. Shaykh, uh, we've got a question that's coming from <coughs> one of our viewers and that is, can we perform ablution if there <coughs> is oil on my hair? From the opinion of His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Bashir al-Najifi. Um, the Shaykh mentions that uh, if the oil is dense and has density and thickness, and of course it will uh, prevent from the reach of the water of the wudu on the skin and this type of <coughs> um, um, oil is waterproof mm -hmm. so the one should remove it first <coughs> and then perform uh, the wudu so yeah, it depends on the types of the oil sometimes you have an uh, oil in which <coughs> almost liquid so that wouldn't really affect on the wudu but if it's dense and thick that would, of course, prevent the reach of the water to the yes. parts of the wall. Excellent. Thank you. Shall I have a question in from one of our viewers? Um, d because of the question, I'm going to say it is a gentleman that is asking. As we are in the summer months and the weather is <coughs> getting very, very hot, uh, can I do my waji prayers at home wearing only my undergarments? So maybe a box of shorts or, or underwear or something like that. Is this person allowed to pray his... Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha uh, because of the, of the heat and so forth maybe this person finds it easier <coughs> or it be cooler for them to, to do it like that is this acceptable? As long as the the private parts in the front and the back are covered that should mm -hmm. be fine Okay, so there's no issue yeah. as long as uh, the private parts are covered <coughs> uh, yes. for that brother I do recommend wearing shorts <laughs> if you're going to be wearing praying topless or anything like that Sheikh, a person who is liable to pay the zakah, 
is owed money by a poor individual. So someone owes me money, or I've given a loan to someone who's, who's in a financial need, and I have to pay my zakah. Is it permissible for him to offset the debt against the zakah? Can I tell this poor person that, you know what, you can keep the loan and I will give it to you as a niya of zakah and charity? Is this acceptable? Yes, of course, the one can do such a thing. And of course, the zakat mentioned is zakatul an'am, the, the zakat of the cattle, if you have a large amount of cattle. You have a farm with wheat, barley, uh, uh, dates, and so forth. You have gold and silver in, 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 in large amounts. Uh, those in which they have to pay the zakat for any excess amount, the, the threshold depends on the how many kilograms of, of, of gold and silver mm -hmm. and barley and wheat and so forth they have. So yes, in this situation, the one can actually uh, pay the zakat. Inshallah. Yes. Shall a question from I think it's from the YouTube. Uh, this one may need a bit of research on our behalf. Why did uh, Muhammad uh, have marital relations with the youngest wife, Aisha, daughter of Abu Bakr, when he was about 53 and she was only nine years old? Now, Sheikhna, um, the age of uh, Aisha, uh, daughter of Abu Bakr, is, is, is debated within uh, the schools of thought. Uh, many say that she was nowhere near the age of nine. She was actually the youngest I've heard, maybe 15, 16. More so, she was in her 20s. Um, I've heard even debates and dialogue that she was married before and she was divorced uh, before she married Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and so forth. Um, and furthermore, we, there's not much mentioned in regards to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and his marital relations with his wife as if it's, it's private, it's, it's nothing to do with us. So, for those who argue why did Rasulullah at the age of 53 marry such a young lady or so forth, how, how do we respond to that? Well, initially, uh, many of the uh, narrations about Aisha or her narrations from Rasulullah are from the uh, Sunni sources. Mm -hmm. And we cannot accept their uh, narrations. Yes. Because these are Ahad, they end to Aisha. So we cannot accept uh, her narrations at all in this regard that, you know, I was a child when uh, Rasulullah came in a, pro a proposal, I was on my swing. M my mother took me from the swing and brought him to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And in, in the age of nine and so forth, so all these ahadith mm. is from her yes. uh, narrations. And we cannot accept her narrations. It doesn't mm. lead to anywhere else. Ahad, these are uh, mentioned in the books of hadith, uh, you know, in terms of the uh, discussions about uh, the Senate and chain yes. of nar narrators and so forth. So we cannot accept these ahadith. We have to uh, look at the other side of the story. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, that there's also other narrations in which mentions yeah. that she was married, for example, or Before she was even older than this yeah. age and so forth. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is Allah's messenger. Mm -hmm. And um, once I was asked about, asked about why did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Married so much women, you know, nine at least yes. in his life. Um, and I mentioned that there were lots of Arab tribes mm -hmm. in which they had issues with the Prophet uh, you know, uh, revenge, avenge, and so forth. So in order to uh, swallow this, uh, um, you know, uh, the feeling of revenge, revenge, mm -hmm. he had to marry from those tribes. Mm -hmm to calm down, to cool down their anger yes. against the Prophet mm. uh, He did this, yeah, this even it wasn't to do with lust mm. and, and you know, shahwa and personal yeah. desires mm. that let, let me have more women. Yeah. No, na'udhu billah. That's not uh, how the Prophet Even, even act. Back, back home where I'm from in Pakistan, if there are two tribes or two families at war um, to settle the quarrels and stuff, they will have each um, a boy and a girl from each family marry. And, and to, to, to settle and, and to calm the fighting, to say, look, we're family now, and there's no need for, for this. So it's very, very common, even to this day, uh, like that. Shannon, we're going to go to a short break, inshallah. Join us after the break. We're going to show you a little VT, and we'll see you on the other side. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I have a question regarding keeping pictures Is of scholars. Is it permissible at home? to plant trees by or Was over Islam the established? 
based on peace is and non-violence. Is it permissible to collect donations for charity projects from Is it permitted to consume canned food imported from non-Muslim countries? Is there an issue for men looking at non-Muslim women? To have your questions answered live, call in on plus four four two zero three five one five zero one nine nine, or WhatsApp us on plus four four seven four one five zero nine two one five five. Alternatively, you can also email us on ahkamsos at imamhussein.tv. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Ahkam SOS. Uh, as you saw in the VT, we do take in all your questions. If you have any question in regards to any topic whatsoever, you may have a question in regards to marriage, maybe uh, in regards to finance, maybe in regards to traveling, prayer, fasting, hajj, whatever topic you have, it is our duty to go and find the answers for you. If you have a question in preference to a particular marja, Alhamdulillah, we have contacts with the official offices and the official representatives of all the maraja and we can actually go and, and speak to them and get your answers. Send your questions in to the WhatsApp, the email address, uh, if you're watching on, on YouTube or on Facebook Live, put your question in the comment section or why not give us a call here live in the studio, plus 44-515-0199, inshallah we'll be able to answer your questions. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykhna. Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh, now, what is the ruling in the matter of meat or hide of an animal sold by Muslims, especially when it is not known if it was ritually slaughtered or not? Now, his eminence, the Grand Ayatollah, says Sistani, he has a, uh, uh, an opinion on this. What does he say? The Sayyid mentions that you should assume this type of uh, meat or hide or the slaughtering as a shara'i slaughtering mm -hmm. uh, because you're taking this from a Muslim hand. Yes. And the Whatever you take from the Muslim, uh, then it's considered to be halal. You know, the Muslim sells you chicken and, and, and meat mm -hmm. and, and so forth. It's halal. Nice. A restaurant, a butchery, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Unless you discover or he tells you this is haram. And it happens mm -hmm. sometimes that, you know, the one who works there, he would say to you that, you know, we're, mi we're mixing haram and halal meat. Mm -hmm. So it's mixed. Please don't consume anymore. Yes then of course you have to avoid. Mm -hmm. But when you buy from the Muslim market, from a Muslim hand, from a Muslim shop, that mm -hmm. is halal, that's it. There's, there's no issue uh, for you to consume and use that hide or leather mm -hmm. or uh, uh, meat and chicken. Sheikh, if one owns a house and they are renting it out to students, uh, and as you know, some young people can be a bit irresponsible and careless with their, with their money, is it acceptable for the landlord to charge a fine if the rent is not paid on time? I know His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sa'id Hakim, he has uh, an opinion on this. Does he accept and allow uh, you know, people to charge a fine for late payments of rent on rental property? Yes, the Sayyid mentions that it is permissible uh, when they are both aware of the situation, of the time, of the delay, of whatever is, is in, in the, uh, the criterion of the, the, uh, uh, the contract. So if both agree on these conditions, that's of course permissible, <coughs> and he can charge for any delay, mm -hmm. delayed uh, um, rent. Of course, we have in the whole Quran, the ayah says, Tijara an taradin, in other words, a mutual accepted trade. If okay. both parties agree upon okay, like a term. something, then that's a it. Term or a clause in the contract. Uh, there's a tarawih, there's acceptance, there's a pleasure mm -hmm. and, and, and acceptance and satisfaction between two parties yes. in this regard of business, for example. Mm -hmm. Of course, if it's a halal business, not a haram business. I see. I see. Sheikhna, what is makuru or discouraged <coughs> to do when it comes to the time of eating? In overall, to eat excessively. Um, mm. We have in the hadith that um, there is nothing more detested in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal than a full stomach. When somebody fills his stomach over the amount required food and drink, of course he, ca he, he will not be able to carry out other things such as ibadah, work uh, and other duties. Filling out, you know, filling the stomach more than the required will make the one uh, behind his duties and activities. In the Holy Quran, in chapter 7, verse 31, Allah states, uh, وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا 
إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ and eat and drink, but do not be excessive. He does not like the excessive. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't ha eat or drink excessively. That's very important. So that's one of the issues in which one should uh, take care of. Sheikh, uh, <coughs> we have a, a viewer that's um, very adamant that we answer their question quite uh, promptly. Uh, the question is, someone was making a sermon about who are the Sahabas. And in it, he says, the Ahlul Bayt can be known as the Sahaba. I didn't understand that because I know Sahabas are not Ma'asum, but the Ahlul Bayt are Ma'asum. So, um, so is there a difference? Please, what do you say about that? Initially, the Holy Quran um, states with regards to Imam Al-Hassan and Hussein mm -hmm. in the event of Mubahala between the Holy Prophet and his pure family, and between the Nasara of Najran, the Christians of Najran. Yes. When they came together to do Mubahala, to see who is uh, the liar, who is mm -hmm. on, on, on the wrong side. So Allah would uh, uh, descend his la'na and curse upon those who deserve it. So who the Prophet brought, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? Did he brought the Sahaba? Mm -hmm. Never ever. He brought his own family. He yes. brought Fatima, Ali, mm -hmm. Hassan, and Hussein alayhim as salam wa salatullah alayhim jami'an. And the Holy Quran mentioned, wa abna'ana wa abna'akum. Our sons, the Christian, yes. your sons and our sons. Abna'ana, our sons and your sons, wa abna'akum. So uh, the Quran uh, mentions that Hassan and Hussein alayhim as salam are the sons of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not just grandsons, sons. And in many narrations, the Ibn or Ibni mentions in the hadith that they would mention Ibn, Ibn Rasulullah, Ibni, Ibnaya, the Holy Prophet mm -hmm. He wouldn't say my grandsons. No, he would, he would say Ibnaya, my sons, yes. directly. Mm -hmm. Because the al lineage is from Fatima alayhi mm -hmm. So that's one part of the uh, argument. The second part is that uh, the Holy Prophet and Ahl Bayt mentioned in different uh, phrases that we the Ahl Bayt no one can be compared to us. لا يقاسو أحد بآل محمد سلام الله عليه. Nobody can be compared. Mm -hmm. So how can we compare Ahl Bayt with Sahaba? In which the Holy Quran states, إن قلبتم على عقابكم. You went against your heels. Deviated. The Quran says, إن قلبتم. That after the Prophet you would deviate. Mm -hmm. And they deviated, yes, by leaving Ali السلام, alone and giving bay'ah to others in the mosque of the Prophet. So uh, that's a reality in which we cannot compare Ahl Bayt with any, uh, any of his creation. Mm -hmm. They are the top of the top, the best of the best of the blessed. So we cannot compare Ahl Bayt to the Sahaba, of course, definitely. Sometimes, for the case of argument, you might say, yeah, Hassan and Hussein were part of the Sahaba, they were with the Sahaba. Yes, you might for argument that. Why do you ignore Hassan and Hussein, and you stick mm -hmm. with the Sahaba? That they are the best, they are the such and such. Mm -hmm. That they are the sons of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They have the priority. Yes. So, ala kulli hal, this is the situation in which we have to uh, um, um, yes, deal with and basically uh, respect. Excellent, Sheikh Nam. Sheikh Nam, next question. While I was cooking rice, I found something in the rice. I had a doubt that it could be mouse droppings or something else. What is the ruling about the cooked food? With the opinion of His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sheikh Wahid Khursani. In overall, um, um, with a doubt, you cannot basically take a decision and basically uh, deem this food that is najis and impure and have to throw away, for example. Um, as long as you're not sure, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes even happen that you see on your clothes or on your towel, other clothes, that there's a red paint. Yes. It could be a blood, it could be a red paint. Yes. So you can't say this is a blood, najis, mm -hmm. then no, you can't. Mm -hmm. Unless you're sure, you're certain, certain yeah. then you have to apply mm -hmm. the uh, rules of ahkam of yeah. nijasa. Awesome. Otherwise, everything is tahar. 
-hmm. Unless you're certain, always memorize this, yes. uh, and to the viewers to memorize this, this uh, basis and this uh, hukum, mm -hmm. that everything is tahir and pure, so. unless you are uh, you certain that it, it, mm -hmm. it is certain. impure and najis. Uh, yeah, so uh, we used to call it a qaida in in uh, in, in, in yeah. Hawza, right? Basis, yeah. I guess it's, it's a principle or, yeah. or a lesson that one, one yeah. can apply. Sheikh, is it mandatory for women to acquire knowledge and Islamic beliefs just as they are obligatory for a man? The kind of knowledge one should learn at the first step is in the purification of one's soul, enabling one to refrain from the prohibited and to discharge one's obligatory duties. The narrations mentions that seeking knowledge is obligatory upon uh, every male and female Muslim. Talabu al-ilm fariza ala kulli Muslim wa Muslimah. So both the male and the female have the uh, obligation of learning the basic needs of, mm -hmm. of the ahkam, of the Islamic knowledge and so forth. So they know what to do. Like the, you just mentioned the, uh, the scenario of this individual who found something in, in, the, in the food. Is it a mouse drop or something else? And if it was actually mouse drop, you know, so if you don't have the knowledge, the hukum that it is najis, you might consume it. Or you just uh, remove that, that drop and you just consume the food and that's najis. So by having the knowledge of the ahkam and so forth, you would not be able, uh, uh, without having this, no, you, you can't proceed. I mean, you would be committing sins after sins because of the jahil and ignorance, mm -hmm. and you have no excuse. Because in the Day of Judgment, they will, they will t tell you, لِمَ لَا تَعَلَّمْتِ Why didn't you go and learn? Your duty is to go and learn, obligation. Mm -hmm. no. Even just a basic masail, basic ahkam, basic aqaid issues. Not in depth, you don't mm -hmm. have to go to Hawza and study. Basic issues, you have to ask if you don't have any access to the mat materials and resources. Shaykhna is like, on, on that, for, you know, uh, our sisters going to gain uh, knowledge and so forth. Um, is it mandatory for them also to get permission from their husbands if they are to go out to learn Islamic knowledge and, and then go to a lesson or, or sciences? What about if they can just get, you know, the permission of their guardian? Um, especially if they're going to somewhere that's, you know, familiar and safe and there's not going to be any issues for her security or anything like that. You see, it differs if it's... Uh, <coughs> wife situation then she needs the um, permission to leave the house from the husband <coughs> but in overall for a lady to travel to, for a woman to travel she doesn't need to, to be with a mahram mm -hmm. like a brother or son or, or, or a husband yes. or a father <coughs> she can tra travel by herself if if the the path or the way is secured mm -hmm. Some cheese products manufactured uh, <coughs> in non-Muslim countries contain rennet extracted from the calf or other animals. We do not know whether the rennet was taken from the animal that was slaughtered according to Islamic laws, nor do we know whether it has transformed into something else. So is it permiss permissible to eat such cheese under the opinion or under the guidance of His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sa'id Hakim? <coughs> yes, the Sayyid mentions that it is allowed to consume such rennet in cheese. Um, and this is an exception uh, compared to other parts of the, of the animal corpse which was slaughtered not in the way of, of the Sharia. Ah. So yes, you can consume such a, a, a part of the cheese and it's tahir. There's no issue with it. Sheikh, who is obliged to pay <coughs> off the debts of those who are financially obliged uh, but are not able to pay them off? Well. <coughs> the Islamic government has the duty to pay off the debts of uh, those who cannot pay their debts mm -hmm. unless they spend on haram, on gambling, on alcohol, yes. of course. But if they are uh, believers, faithful, then of course uh, Muslim leaders have the, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the duty of taking care of their people in a, a narration that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi went on the pulpit, on the member, mm -hmm. and he said, مَنْ تَرَكَ مَالًا فَلِوَرَثَتِهِ Whoever dies and he leaves wealth, then all the wealth is for his heirs and inheritors. In other words, no uh, inheritance tax in Islam at all, unlike today. Mm -hmm. And also he announced that وَمَنْ تَرَكَ دَيْنًا أَوْ ضَيَاعًا فَعَلَيَّ وَإِلَيْهِ and whoever leaves behind 
uh, a, a debt, then come to me and I'll be paying that debt. In other words, the Muslim leader is responsible to help his people, whether in debts, whether in protecting them mm -hmm. from the enemies, at, at all cases, not to leave the Muslim nation in poverty, in difficulty, uh, you know, and leave people to, to suffer so much, especially with pandemic situation. Well, let, them, let them live in prosperity and, and, and peacefulness. So it is a great uh, responsibility for those who lead the Muslim nation to be able to implement the teachings of the Prophet mm -hmm. in this day and age. I see. Shaykh, a question from one of our viewers, and that is, the fixed term marriage or mut'a, is it valid even if it is not intended to be for pleasure? Yes, of course. They can put this clause or criteria in which they're just going to be there, let's say, that they're students and they want to be in one accommodation. Mm they can do this uh, um, and have this condition that is just for us to be together. We share the cost of the, uh, the property, the rent, uh, utility bills and so forth. So we're just there to, to be in one place so you know, we don't have to live each separately in a separate accommodation and mm -hmm. with higher costs. Excellent. Sheikh, is it permissible for a ma'moon to stand alone in a row? Well, it's makruh for the ma'moon to stand uh, alone in a row where there are other spaces available mm -hmm. that he can join with other ones. Sheikh, a question from the WhatsApp. Is it permissible to close my eyes during salah? I find it helps me focus on prayer. Um, His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani, he has an opinion on this. What does he say? The Sayyid mentions that this is part of the makruhat of salah, the discouraged acts of salah. So the one should... Uh, leave this discouraged act and uh, pray with open eyes. Of course, you would point when you're standing and reciting the Hamdan Surah towards the muhr, towards the turba. So you look at the turba and you recite. So you don't close your eyes and stand. Sheikh, final question for the evening from one of our viewers. Can mut'a be done from an unmarried girl without asking her parents. Now, we both know that for you know women who have not been married before or haven't had marital relations, it is vital that you ask her guardian, who would be her father or her grandfather, for permission. Is there any circumstances where that is not required? Well, if she's a virgin, then then she needs or he needs her uh, you know the, her father's permission. There's mm -hmm. no way that he can actually uh, marry her without the permission of the of the father or the wali amr which is the grandfather, you know, the father of the father. Uh, they are the two main wali mm. uh, of this virgin girl. Um, otherwise, <coughs> uh, th th there's actually a way in which if, if that girl was a kitabiyya, okay. a non-Muslim kitabiyya, in which uh, in their community it's, it's normal for uh, a girl to go and walk out with somebody else mm -hmm. and, and have a relationship, yeah. although she's a virgin. Mm -hmm. In this case, if that if that community of the, if that you know as part of the urf and norm, yes. they allow it, then of course no permission is required from the father. Uh -huh. But for the Muslim girl, of course, there, there must be uh, permission, permission before the marriage. Shaykhna, thank you very much for your time and for your effort. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us on this episode of Ahkam SOS. Inshallah, myself and the Sheikh, we will be back on Monday. 6.30 here on Imam Hussain TV3. If you have any questions that you'd like to send in, please send them in via the WhatsApp, the email address. Uh, if you're on Facebook or if you're on your, um, YouTube Live, then you can send in your questions on the comment section. If not, give us a call 0203-515-0199. I would love to hear from you. And inshallah, we'll be able to discuss and answer all of your questions. See you guys soon, Monday, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. We question our daily position Seeking answers and definitions Get the queries of your chest With Ahkam S.O.S.